Hey guys, what's up? It's Megan with Gypsy Deer and Yak here for another yak about what's off my hook. I'd say what's on my hook, but I don't have any current whips. Yay! Um, I have plenty of UFOs though, <laughs> which I'm sure we all do. Um, but it's just that Hirschner's cardigan, I haven't had a chance to just sit down and do it without interruption. Like I said, it's a really intricate pattern, at least the back part is, and I am want to make sure I do it right, you know, because I bought a kit and I've never bought a kit before. So we're going to see what's off my hook. I have two patterns by Courtney at Fiber Fox Studios. Hey girl, hey! <laughs> I hope you're feeling better. I miss that laugh and I miss my tails from the truck. <laughs> so come back soon. Um, anyway, so I have two of her patterns that I have finished. Uh, we are going to go ahead and start with the one I had almost done last week, which was the Charlotte May Poncho, which I was right. I did sew it together wrong. There was supposed to be like, so I couldn't do the pom-pom border, but that's okay. I don't need a big fancy funky border. Um, I ended up doing the peacoat stitch, which is the side border, just all the way around. And I think it came out really, really good. I really love these colors. I love how this came out. Let me back up here so you can see it. See, the little border just gives it a little bit more detail. Actually, let me go closer. Just a little bit of detail, brings it all in. I absolutely love it. This is probably another, one of my favorites. Um, and I will link the pattern down below. It was really super easy to do. Um, it's like the hugs and kisses stitch almost. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, it's, let me see here. There's the stitch. It's got these groovy little X's. And this right here, see these are supposed to be like X's down here, but I ended up sewing my X's together. <laughs> so that was actually supposed to be at the bottom and that way I could have done the palm. But I kind of like the way it came out. It gives it a little bit, I really like the way it came out. So it must have been meant to be that I sewed it just like that. Did this come out? Okay. I don't know if I should still consider this a whip. I forgot to sew in one tail. Don't you hate that when you're like showing your projects and you're like, oh, one tail. Because I can see on this other project, I have one tail that must either slid out or I just didn't get it when I was sewing it in. Bummer sauce. Okay, so this is really simple and easy to do. Most of Courtney um, at Firefox Studios, her patterns are brilliant. Her patterns are the only wearables really I've made except for a couple from um, Bag O' Day. Um, but this next one I'm going to show you, it's the Clarabelle Top. Um, I don't know what was wrong with me. I, I'm used to doing the um, wearables where it's all different sections and then you sew them together. This wearable was you do the shoulders and the chest part first right here. And then you crochet on, you make foundation ovals and crochet on, um, which is the neckline, and then you mark it and then you crochet the two sides for the back part. And then you mark it again after you finish that to do the panels. I don't know if that was too much for my brain to handle um, or because I'm still kind of new and I've never done a wearable like this that I was confused, but I had to frog this like four times. And I I, I don't mind frogging. It's, it's one of the terms um, I personally laugh at all the time. I think it's great. <laughs> but um, I had to frog it a bunch of times and Partly because I was making panels. I was like, okay, so I need two chest panels and then I'm gonna sew them together. And then I need two body panels and I'm gonna sew them together. And that's not what you're doing. You're building on top of it. So, um, you know how when they tell you in a tutorial, watch the video all the way through? I watch it right down the pattern for the stitch. So I did that off the second video because part one of the video, it was a three part video. Part one of the video was um, the yarns used, the hooks used, how many repeats, sizing, all that good stuff. She's very, very thorough, and I love that about her. Absolutely, you, there, there's not, she doesn't really leave room for questions because she's that thorough. Um, and then the second part was a stitch. So I wrote the stitch down because I try to work on this stuff when I'm watching movies with my son or, you know, just so that I have it so I'm not constantly looking at my phone because usually, well, my old phone he had. I got a new phone, so recording should be easier this time. Um, except that I started recording this earlier, had 20 minutes, had to pause to get a pattern to show you guys um, my big project, and I hit the stop button again. And I still don't know how to link two videos, so we're recording it all over again. So if this seems a little like, wow, kind of, you know what I mean when I say, wow, okay. Um, <laughs> it's because it's take two. 
Um, anyway, so here is the Clarabelle top. Isn't that gorgeous? Wait, hold on, am I holding it the right way? No, I'm not. I'm holding it on the side. Okay, so here <laughs> is the Clarabelle top. And it's absolutely beautiful. Like, see that? It's gorgeous. Um, but I don't know what I did. The top fits perfect. The bottom part, the panels, it looks a little bit bigger now, but yesterday when I tried it on, it like stopped like here. And I'm like, ooh, you know, maybe one too many slices of cake. Not sure. <laughs> you know, it's that COVID, it's like freshman 30, you know, you either gain or lose 30 pounds when you start college. Um, COVID-19 is making everybody gain like 30 plus. <laughs> so I don't know if that's what it is or not, but it was fitting a little weird. Um, let me see if it's, yeah. Um, but it's gorgeous. I love the pattern. It's beautiful. And I took some pictures of it on me. And I posted them on my Instagram, which will be linked down below if you guys want to go check it on. Um, I'm not going to put it on right now because I got a clip of my hair and it gets stuck on the stitches because that's what happened yesterday too. So the yarn I used, let's see if we can, oh, it's actually focusing this time. When I did it earlier, it didn't focus. Okay, there we go. It is Soho Fancy That and it's got like, let's see, hold on. Eh, there we go. Oh, hold on. Eh, eh, right there. Um, it's got pinks and oranges and like this grayish purple in it. It's gorgeous. Um, it is a light three weight yarn. I don't have the ball band right now. And I'm not about to try and pause this to go grab an extra ball because it might be take three the next time I come on. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a really, and I don't know if it was the way it was being built or if it was the yarn because I've used Mandala, um, but this is silky. Like it's super silky feeling. It feels great on your skin. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, or what, or if my brain was just fried. I'm not sure. I don't know. I just, I, I had to frog it like four times, mainly because I had, was doing panels. And then when I was sewing it together, I was a little bit confused and I don't, I just, it, uh, ah, <laughs> it was one of those moments, but I did do the slit part and then I sewed it up from the slit part. There we go. Up to the side. And then here's the big bell arms right here. Okay. And it's gorgeous. It's an absolutely gorgeous design. I wasn't sure about it at first. It was in my whip pile for a while. Um, and then I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to tuck in and get it done after last week's video. And I was like, you know what? I don't want any more whips. I just want to get things done. I have plenty of things waiting to jump on my hook. Um, including her Mercedes top, which I will probably be starting today, and it will be, um, because I have a little bit of happy mail that I'm going to film, but it's happy unhappy mail. <laughs> it was an order from Hobby Lobby that was not completed, and yeah, I'll go into that in the next video when I do the happy mail, and I'll show you if I have anything done on the Mercedes top when I film it. Um, but it's, it's a gorgeous top. It's, it's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, I just, I don't, I'm going to try and do it with a four weight yarn and a larger hook and see if that helps me because that's the same thing. When I first learned how to crochet, I couldn't do a granny square to save my life. I watched video upon video upon video and it wasn't until I saw Jaden Stitch's two strand granny square that I got it. It's exactly the same as every other granny square, but two strands and I got your girl had it down. I was like, oh. I don't know if it's the weight of the yarn or what, or if it's just a mental thing, but as soon as I put two strands together, I was busting out granny squares like crazy, and now I can do granny squares whenever. Um, which I do them just sporadically, and then I throw them in a big box of granny squares that I have, and then we'll see if I'm gonna, you know, put them together, or if it's just gonna be practice squares, you know? Um, kind of like, you know, like test patterns kind of thing where you, Test something out, but oh, I like that, but I don't know what I want to do with it yet. So you put it to the side so you figure it out. Something kind of like that. Um, so I totally sidetracked myself. We take the scenic route around here. <laughs> it's the weekend. What else you got to do? Um, if you're watching me, you know I ramble and I take the scenic route around everything. <laughs> so that was the Clarabelle top, and we did the Charlemagne poncho. I love this thing. Oh my God, I love this thing. Um, another, I only have four finished projects, so this should not be a long video. It should be rather short. 
Um, the next one I'm going to show you is actually uh, Jennifer at Fiber Flux, her cow. And it was, it's a four part cow and I don't understand why 100%. Sorry, neighbors walking by. Um, the first one, I get it. She always does a um, list of what you need. What do you need to do to complete this cow, this project? So she goes over yarns and um, hooks and how many repeats, and it's, it's really informative and it's good, especially if you're a beginner, to get that information so you're set for the project. I am de-stashing. I'm trying not to buy any new yarn, I, uh, she says as she looks over at the happy unhappy mail because I did need to get some yarn for something, but um, I'll go into that in the next video. Um, so I used, she used a four weight yarn and a six millimeter hook. I used my Mandela and the Colorway Troll, which is a very pretty color, um, and a 5.25 boy hook. Um, just because of a smaller weight yarn and everything. Like that. And it's a really simple, easy V-stitch and it is a free crochet tutorial on our YouTube channel. It is also a free pattern on her blog. Um, which I will try to remember to link her blog, but I will definitely link the video. So it is an asymmetrical shawl, and it is called the Comforts of Home Shawl. So we'll start up here, because this is the end part of it. And this color is pretty, and I'm going to fold it because it's, it's very wide. And then it goes into this section here. And then it goes here. And then it goes here. Oops. And then it ends with this color. What I liked is that the troll ball started here and ended here. So it brought the whole shawl in together. Um, when we, the first part, like I said, was going over the list of the um, things that you need to do the cow. The second part was the actual stitch pattern. So I worked the stitch pattern and then I know that she had mentioned that she was going to do a tassel. So I had left a bunch of yarn. And then when the third video came out, that's why it took so long, because I was waiting for the videos, because I was trying to be good and not just finish it and be done with it. I wanted to do it exactly how she was doing it. Well, she did, um, used all of her yarn until she couldn't complete a full row, and she was able to make a tassel with hers. And I don't know if that was because of four weight or what. I did another finished a complete row, and then I literally had, like, that much yarn left. So I folded it over a bunch of times, and instead of doing a tassel, I did a little fringe. See how much little yarn I had left? That's the yarn I had left over. Like I folded it a bunch of times and then I just took it on and it made it into a little fringe. And I think it came out very, very pretty and it's very lightweight. And I know the next video is coming out, I think I think Tuesdays are the day she comes out with the cow. I can't remember for sure. But I think it's gonna be how to wear this sucker. Cause you know, you make the little palm thing and, um, and I, before I started crocheting, I was not a scarf person, shawl person. Nothing like that. So I think she's going to go over how you can wear it, but I don't know. I got that, that'll work or over your back or I don't know. So I think that's what the last video is, but I have posted this on my Ravelry. I posted it on Instagram, Facebook, in the Fireflux Cal group. Um, so it's all over the internet <laughs> and it's very, very pretty. See, it's just a simple V stitch, uh, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then you, um, as you go with asymmetricals, you, Make it bigger on the other side. Wow, what did my brain just do? Anyway, you would <laughs> make it longer on the other side. Okay? So you would do like an extra. You make it, you widen it on one side. That's what I was, where I was looking for. So I think that's very, very pretty. And I finished that. Because she did come out with the part with the tassel, the third part. So I'm guessing the fourth part of the cal is going to be how to wear it and all that kind of good stuff. So that's my three little projects that I finished. Um, I finished a blanket, because <laughs> I like doing blankets. Um, I had a little issue with this blanket though. Um, and I know what stitch it was uh, that I had an issue with. So um, I was signed up for Hooked on Homemade Happiness, 12 Days of Christmas. So you got a pattern sent to your inbox and go get a free download PDF of the pattern instead of having to pay for it. And on the last day, you were able to go over to her Ravelry store and select the pattern you wanted. So, and it was a free pattern on her blog, um, but I, and I know that because I had bookmarked it on my Kindle, but I never went back to it because I am like squirrel <laughs> over everything. I, I'm easily distracted. 
it makes life interesting, you know, distracted. Um, so I have it saved, and it was the very first week, which was the Granny Spike Stitch. And then I never went back. And so when I saw it, I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna do, I'm, that's the pattern I wanted. So I went ahead and I downloaded that. Or I got that as my free pattern. And then I made the blanket. Now, if you guys remember, I made, I bought that Karen One Pound in the cream, rose, claret, and black to do my Santa blanket. And I ended up doing that um, mosaic or Christy Granny mosaic square from uh, Tracy Crochet Rocks. What's up, Tracy? Um, <laughs> and it just, it was, it was, I love it. And you guys already know what my plans are for it. I'm planning a baby blanket and then a Christmas throw because it looks like, a, it looks like snowflake to me. So I'm going to be doing that. Sorry, I need to get a little bit of water. I have no coffee. No coffee, guys. Which could explain why my brain keeps going, <laughs> it's like trying to restart itself. Um, I'm gonna have to get coffee after this. Anyway, sorry, sidetracked. Oh, I saw my nose. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> one of those days. So I got the pattern and I did it and I ended up using those colors. And I swear, I'm gonna do a yarn review, but I think I have a new favorite yarn. Like I, I, I like Red Heart, I don't mind using Red Heart. The Karen One Pound is like, doesn't split. It's a really nice yarn to work with. I had no problems. I made a blanket. I'm going to show you right now how big the blanket is. And I had no problems with it. So I will be doing a yarn review video on that. Um, and I know right now it's supposed to be, I saw a couple of people post um, Vlogist or Vita. And I guess that means video every day in August. Um... I don't know if I can commit to that because I don't know if I have enough stuff to show you guys. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't do tutorials um, because I'm still new. So I don't know if I have enough to show you, but I'm going to try and do like a yarn review. And then when I get my happy, unhappy mail <laughs> um, or if I have whips going on or anything like that, um, I'll try and post that more frequently throughout August. Like maybe I'll do like three or four videos a week or let's let's three videos a week <laughs> or do what I can. Cause I mean, um, I know I watched in April before I had it on my channel, I watched uh, Tracy at Crochet Rocks. I watched her Vita and now she's doing it every single day. And I'm like, oh, I want to stay up to date, but I can't, I don't spend that much time on YouTube and I'm trying to do patterns. And so I, I, I try and catch in on the lives for sure, when she does her lives, but I haven't watched every single one of her vlogs. And I think she's on like a hundred and no, 93. Something, somewhere around there. Um, but I will try because it seems like it's something that's being done, but I'm not quite sure. I don't know if I have enough content, to be honest. Okay, so anyway, back to the pattern. So I bought the Scrap Dan pattern. Well, I didn't buy it. I got it as my free uh, last day of the 12 days of Christmas um, that she was having on her blog because I'm signed up for the emails. So here is the blanket and the blanket, a little bit about the pattern. Um, it was 12 different stitches and then a border. So there's 13 parts. Um, every single stitch on here, except for one, which is the waffle stitch, because I have done that for my very first baby blanket. It's on my um, Instagram. Um, I haven't shown any pictures of it. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll show you past projects that I've done is another uh, vlog thing um, for this August thing. Because I have work that I did and completed before I ever started my channel. I'm only showing you stuff that I've completed since I started the channel. Like I did um, Cinnamon Stitches, um, Cinnamon Fade Shawl, and my mom's a huge Harry Potter fan. So I did in the Hogwarts colors. So maybe that's what I'll do is I'll go back and show you some of my past projects as a video. Um, we'll see, we'll see what, what happens. Anyway, so this is the blanket. I'll make sure I'm holding it at the shippy top part. Okay, so this, I gotta step back so I can show you the, how tall the blanket is. So if I hold it right here on my body, it touches the floor. So we're gonna raise it up and step all the way back and hope you can see it. I can't tell if you can see it all because I'm short. So I'm trying to raise it up some so you can see it. So it's a pretty decent sized blanket. I should have measured it. Nobody ever asked me about measurements, but I know other people do it. So probably should remember that. I gotta take notes when I do my videos because I just film, let it go. Um, anyway. So, like I said, there are 13 stitches on here, and the only one I had ever done was this beauty right here, the waffle stitch. And I had done a really pretty blanket um, for uh, my sister from another Mista, her actual sister's uh, little girl that she was having. 
but they didn't know the sex. So I did it in um, a light greeny color, a light yellow, and a white. And I made a hat and little booties and stuff like that. It's really super cute. Um, so anyway, so it starts off with the... And I had a little bit of issue. And I know what stitch... What? Bloop, bloop, sorry. <laughs> I know what stitch started my issue at. Um, but it starts with the... I'm holding this upside down. You guys can tell what it is. So this is the granny. Actually, let's... No, this way. Put it on my back. Hold it up. <laughs> ah, troubles. Okay. So it started with the granny spike stitch. And then it went into... I think this is called... I've got the pattern right here. I'm trying to... Do, do, do. Oops, sorry. Um, the next part of this is called... Okay, so it's a granny spike stitch. And then the... Next one is the pebble stitch, which is this lovely one right here. Isn't that pretty? Let's see if I can. That. Okay, hold on. Sorry. There's the pebble stitch. We're gonna get me out of the view. So we got the granny spike stitch, the pebble stitch, and then it went into the herringbone. I think that's pretty. Double crochet. And then uh, after the herringbone double crochet, this one right here, this next stitch I'm gonna show you. Oh, it's too hot to do that. The next stitch, this one right here. Isn't that gorgeous? Now you know that blue and black uh, sparkle yarn that I showed you last week in the Sweetheart Scarf from Tracy Crochet Rocks that I gave for my mom for her early birthday present? Um, I'm gonna use that yarn and do that stitch and make myself a scarf because that stitch uh, is called the bead stitch and it's beautiful. I, I had so much fun doing this bead stitch. Like, I, I, this was a blast for me. I thought that was gorgeous looking. Um, so I will be working on something with that. I'm gonna try and design something like that and I think it'll look really good with um, uh, Crystal Bagoday Crochet's Puff Stitch Beret. I've made a bunch of those. For people and um i keep getting told oh my god i love this da, 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 da. um so i've made a couple for friends of my mom and stuff like that but and i have one a set that i made when i made my own gloves and stuff like that um when i first started learning again i might do that where i show you guys my past projects but i think that with that uh bead stitch as a scarf and then the puff stitch beret i think that would be beautiful unless i can figure out how to make a bead stitch beret Maybe I'll work on that. So then the next two stitches are the lemon peel stitch, excuse me, are the lemon peel stitch and the spike stitch. And the spike stitch, ladies and gentlemen, is where I hit my issue. Okay, so we've got, this is a lemon peel stitch right here, and that was pretty. Then here's my spike stitch, and that's pretty, right? You're supposed to have like 121 stitches at the end of this thing. And I ended up with like way, 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 way more than that. So I had to like single crochet things together and I had to like to make it back because it's I switched rows every couple of colors and I didn't notice it until I was like on my third row. And I'm like, I can't just rip it out. It's not going to work. So I had to make adjustments and I think it came out OK. And when I did the border, I was able to straighten it out. But it was like, this side was all the way in almost, like, for the other stitches. And then this one was way out. It was, it was, whoo, man, if you didn't think I was a newbie, I should have shown you pictures. <laughs> but I didn't because I was like, nope, I'm going to fix this. And I did. And it's it came out beautiful. I absolutely love it. So the next two stitches is the butterfly stitch, what I think is really pretty and I think would make a very pretty baby blanket. Is this one right here? Isn't that pretty? And they look like, but oh, see, when I look at it, my pattern myself, when I first did it, I was like, that doesn't look like butterflies. But holding it up, I can see the butterfly. And you know what I think it is? Is I did um, all of uh, Courtney's butterfly patterns. Like I have the shawl, I have the poncho, I have the cowl. Um, so this one, it said butterfly. I was like, that's not a butterfly. <laughs> but it does. It looks really pretty. And then the next stitch was the waffle stitch. And then after that, the next two stitches, which were on nine and 10 out of a 12 stitch pattern, is the extended single crochet, which, 
Oh, I tell a fib. I have done this. This is what I did that um, button down tank top that is now my beach cover up that I did from um, Hooked on Homemade Happiness. Speaking of which, um, so that was this one right here, the red and black. They're pretty. And then the next stitch, which I will probably, I, I might work on it again. I won't. I won't. Oh, well, maybe. No, no. Right now, I am pretty soured about this stitch. <laughs> it took for this row, just this row, just this part of the blanket, this black right here. That's my Celtic loose stitch. You can't even see the detail of it. Okay, it's a very textured stitch. It took me like three hours to do that bit. Do you see that size? But it's very textured, and I've never done the Celtic loose stitch. You can, okay, there you can kind of see where it goes. I don't know if I wasn't getting it explained correctly in the pattern or what was going on with it, but it was, yeah, I, I'm pretty soured on this stitch. The next stitch, which I actually watched, um, I couldn't, by the time I, because I, I, when I work on something, I work on it. I don't stop. So by the time I should stop, my brain's kind of like, like, so I couldn't understand what I was reading in the pattern. So I went on the crochet crowd and looked up the star stitch. Isn't that pretty? And I think that's gorgeous. I think that in a baby dress or baby or maybe a dress hat blankie would be beautiful, especially in those colors. Ugh. I think it really well in the star stitch. It kind of makes me think of like like a little row of flowers. Doesn't it look like a row of flowers? Anyway, so I did the star 